This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. Okay, so you guys, uh, I heard, are not tired of me talking about opioids, so we'll do another <laughs> opioid medical minute. So what's the great irony of opioids? They cause pain. So we use them to, of course, treat pain, but there's this condition called opioid-induced hyperesthesia. Uh, so opioids kind of long-term, especially some types of opioids, cause pain. And kind of, do you know the mechanism of that? Yeah, so, so it's actually kind of interesting. Yeah, and, and that's kind of, you know, Steve said central nervous system inflammation, and that's actually partially correct. Um, so we basically have different types of receptors that we have in our brain and in our periphery for opioids. And there's two that are really kind of indicated for opioid-induced hyperesthesia. The first is that there's these kappa mu receptors or these kappa opioid receptors that are kind of peripheral. And kind of dysnorphine, which also sounds bad, kind of activates those with a lot of things like morphine, et cetera. And then actually causes central sensitization so that you feel more pain when you have a painful stimuli. And the other thing is another kind of receptor which all of us love to use which is the NMDA receptor. Do you guys know what medicine we use that acts on the NMDA receptor? Like what's the common one we use? Not not fentanyl, ketamine. I heard someone say ketamine, exactly. And ketamine is kind of an NMDA receptor antagonist. So NMDA is again this receptor that when you activate it increases transmission of pain and causes central sensitization. So most opioids increase have both NMDA agonism and then kappa mu receptor agonism. So that's key for us when patients come in and they're on chronic opioids and their pain might be difficult to control, things that we can use to actually get their pain relief uh, more rapidly controlled would be things like ketamine, right? What's the best way to give ketamine? Slowly or orally? You know, this is one thing where we could tell you guys all to give uh, IV ketamine over 10 minutes, but let's be honest, you guys have a lot of crap to do. Oftentimes that ketamine gets pushed faster than 10 minutes, and then the patient either goes to K-Lan and they're overjoyed about it, or they're in a K-hole saying, what the hell did you just give me, right? And we can avoid a lot of that by just giving that same ketamine orally. It's the same liquid ketamine, 25 to 50 milligrams. Put it in some juice because it tastes like crap is what I've been told. But just give it to them orally and they get really good pain relief from that. The other things that are NMDA antagonists that we don't think about, there's one that we sometimes use, works for migraines, works for AFib. It's kind of a very interesting metal. It's magnesium. So you can actually use, and I've done this sometimes as part of kind of a cocktail for patients who are on long-term opioids, as I oftentimes will give them infusions of magnesium as part of my alto cocktail along with oral ketamine and everything else and Tylenol and Motrin and NSAID. And, you know, so it's just another thing that you can use. And magnesium on its own has been shown to be really great for migraines. Actually, you know, there's just a recent study that says magnesium is just as good as giving them basically Reglan and the typical migraine cocktail is just an infusion of magnesium. But that's another thing you can use. The other things that are great are sometimes clonidine. I'll throw clonidine at them for patients who have bad opioid-induced hyperesthesia. And then finally, I'll end with this, is there's two opioids that actually are NMDA antagonists, have a little bit of NMDA antagonist activity and a little bit of kappa antagonist activity. Do you know what they are? Tramadol does. Actually, tramadol is one of them. So there's actually three. Tramadol has a little bit of NMDA antagonist activity. And then the other ones are buprenorphine, which we use a lot, right? And then methadone. So oftentimes, if you have patients who are like that and they've been in and out of the ER, sometimes I'll tell them, hey, go back and talk with your primary care doctor about switching to either methadone or buprenorphine because oftentimes they'll actually have much better pain control and you can lower their dose. The Emergency Medical Minute would like to thank our sponsor, Swedish Medical Center, for helping fund our nonprofit organization and make this podcast possible. Donations are essential to our organization to cover operational costs and fund the creation of our online courses offering AMA PRA Category 1 credits. So if you enjoy our show, and if you're able to make a one-time or recurring donation towards our organization, any amount is helpful. Please click the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.